Hello everyone and welcome to Math Geese History Week. While I'm on vacation, Seven Days to Die is taking a vacation as well. At least my single player is. And in um, return, I am doing some gameplay of older video games. And the first one in this week's series that I'm going to do is actually the oldest of the bunch. Because this game, Broken Sword, Shadow of the Templar, well the original version, was launched in 1996. So that's over 20 years ago. Um, we're playing the director's cut today so that is a slight revamp uh, but is still older than 10 years or, or over 10 years old. So um, basically it's the 20 year old version but it has a little bit of extra bits in the storyline um, and uh, it is made to work on the actual computers of today. Um, it's a point-and-click game. It's a fantastic game, in my opinion, and even after even after 20 years, it's still a lot of fun to play, especially if you like puzzles. Um, now, without further ado, we might as well start playing the game, and I think it'll start off with a little bit of a cutscene, and uh, we'll go from there. Paris, city of love, romance, and dreams. So they say. I used to say it too. But ever since that day, the day of the murder, I've always associated my beloved Paris with death. Editor called. Collard, get your ass over to the Palais Royal now. You got an interview with Pierre Carchamp. Yes, the Pierre Carchamp. No photos, so leave your gear at home. He has for you personally. Don't ask me why. Anyhow, this could be big, so if he makes a pass, don't forget. Just smile, say yes, and keep taking notes. So charming, and so very apt. Pierre Carchon was a media king, a national hero, and one of the most infamous adulterers in Europe. He and his wife Imelda were just one step down from royalty. Whoa, I hate mimes, but unless you humor them, they don't go away. Here I was. The palace of the media king and the ice queen. I pressed the doorbell and set in motion a chain of events which would change my life forever. Yes, what is it? Madame, my name is Nico Collard. I'm here to see Monsieur Carchon. Come up, we're on the first floor. Madame Carchon, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, I'm sure. The Ice Queen was certainly living up to her reputation. Will you be staying for the interview? Mademoiselle, I know little of my husband's business affairs, and I care even less. I certainly have no intention of watching him pour over yet another pretty little journalist. Pretty? You're too kind, madame. The talented and very beautiful Mademoiselle Collard. Such a pleasure to meet you at last. Monsieur Carchon, I am honored. Oh, I'm sure you are. Call me Pierre, please. But I do not flatter you idly. I was a friend of your father. He was a great man. My father? 
he never mentioned. He and I were very close. And then his death. So tragic. I must... Imelda, your damned cat's in my study again. Another Ming vase, I suppose. Excuse me for one moment, my dear girl. You journalists are getting younger each year. Perhaps it's the rest of the world getting older, madame. That was no cat. My God, what? Monsieur Carson! He's dead. I must call the police. You'd better stay here. There was a man. It was the mime. Do you think he... Well, I believe we can rule out suicide, don't you? No wonder they called her the Ice Queen. She would have been top of my list of suspects if I hadn't seen the attacker myself. And if I hadn't come across a couple of murders just like this already. One of the most important men in Europe murdered. And here was I, Nico Coulard, alone at the scene of the crime. Should I wait for the cops or start my own investigation? It was a no-brainer. Right. Um, first things first, let's tweak the audio a bit. Uh, I'll tweak the audio for you guys um, in editing, but that just blew my eardrums out. So, um, anyway, this is us. Well, one of us. We This game actually has two main characters. Uh, this is uh, Nico. Um, and um, uh, she has a friend, John Stobart, which will come later on in the game. Um, and uh, we have to solve murders, or basically a string of murders, leading up to uh, a case that is involved with the Templars. So, a, a bit of history as well. Now, how this game works is, as you can see, you can see these blue dots moving about, and you can click on them with an eye, and you can inspect the them. The case was filled with obscure first editions. And that might tell you something about the room, or the people, or anything in particular. So, we can now move out of this doorway. We can look at this window. Or interact with it, I should say. A so we... small, round piece of glass had been cut out of the pane. This was a professional job. So we can try to open the door. I know it won't work, but we can try. Apparently it, it did work. The killer must have used a ladder to reach the window. He was long gone. Guess he folded that ladder up, popped it in his pocket and took it with him. Right. So there's nothing there. Uh, so what we do now is we investigate this body. And that will set us on a path of guns solving don't go the together, mystery. But I had an idea that this was no ordinary mime. I'd come across this murderer before and written about him. The costume killer. At least that's what I called him. Now, this game um, is sort of a puzzle game in general. So as you can see here, there's a hair clip over there. Um, it was one of my hair clips. My favorite, in fact. It must have fallen when I was knocked down. Well, she is thinking that I picked it up because it was hers, but now it's actually in our inventory, and we can use that to um, interact with other things. So um, that'll come Some in handy later. Searching corpses for clues. Me, I'm okay with it. Reminds me of an old boyfriend. Carchon had been shot. So in his pocket, I found a ticket stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. Taking the ticket meant I tampered with the evidence. There was no going back now. Basically, in this game, anything you can't pick up, you should pick up. Um, we can close his eyes, I believe. I closed his eyes. It was the least I could do for the poor fellow. And I think we should be able to uh, cover him back up. There you go. Now, we can interact and look at this all around, and but there's no point. Um, and just in... in um, the police could this... turn up at any minute. Somewhere there were clues to the murder, and I needed to find them. Stop talking when I'm talking. Um, just to hurry this along and get a few puzzles in, um, I want to actually start working with it. So, no need to look at the stuff that we don't need to be looking at. 
I reckoned that cloth might just turn out to be useful. So as you can see here, uh, there's a little hole with it that opens up, but our finger won't fit in, as she will tell us. Even my fingernail wouldn't fit into such a small hole. And now comes out that pin we picked up, and we use this on that hole. Aha! Uh -huh. Nico, you are just so damn good at this stuff. Instead of comforting Imelda, I was ransacking her flat. Why? Because there was something going on here, and I had to get answers before the cops arrived. And hey, she'd been rude to me, so she had it coming. Right, so we now picked up a key out of a secret compartment. We also will need this paint. It was a tube of acrylic paint. French ultramarine. So in the beginning of the Just game, the I... Just the color I was after for my bathroom. I'm I... sorry, I have to go. Someone is... Yeah, stop talking. Young lady, what are you doing? Oh, this paint. <laughs> it's my favorite color. For God's sake, keep the damn stuff. Thank you. Well, we could be talking to her and, and uh, ask how she feels, but she'll be a, a biatch about it, so we won't. Um, don't think we need to check this. A magnificent antique table. No, but we will be going into the side room so if I click on the floor you can move around by clicking on the floor um, the door was locked so we need a key for that uh, I don't think this is the actual key for that a modern key on an antique door it wasn't going to work and I think this is the study we just came from yep So the fun thing about this game is actually finding out how to um, get things accomplished, like solving the puzzles. Uh, for now, I forgot how to get the key, so we'll probably go talk to her and ask about a, a key. Excuse me, madame. Yes? Um, I am so let's talk sorry about her this, husband. Madame. No, you're not. You're a journalist. Journalists don't feel sorry. Not true. We shall see. Why does your husband send for me? What did he want to discuss? I have no idea. His business was his business. He never told you anything? No. And frankly, I preferred it that way. How did your husband know my father? I have no idea. You didn't know him? Thierry Coulard? Pierre knew a lot of people I didn't know. Most of them women. Why would a mime want to kill your husband? Pierre had plenty of enemies. Half the husbands in Paris for a start. This is quite a scoop for you. I suppose you're already inventing the headlines. Just because I am a journalist. Don't patronize me. You're all cut from the same cloth. Do you have any moral sense at all? Well, now we can choose to be a good or a bad. Um, and I'm yes. just sticking to That's the truth. That's why I do this job. You do it to see your name in print. As if my editor gets the byline, I just do the work. Well, don't expect my sympathy. The police will be here soon, madame. Is there anybody you would like me to contact? Family? Friends? No. I have no family. Pierre and I were... He was all I had, really. Not much, was it? The dutiful wife? That was my role. He never talked, never let me in. I know one thing, madame. What? If you want to find out who killed your husband, then you let me do the job, not the police. Why? How do I know I can trust you? Your husband invited me here today because he needed me. I think he knew somebody wanted to kill him, and he knew I could help. I doubt it was your database he was after. You're wrong. I was on to his killers already. I am sure of it. Please, you owe it to him. I don't know. All I need is a few more minutes to look around before the police come. You really do have a moral sense, don't you? I trust so few people. And perhaps Pierre really did think that you could help. Of course it wouldn't have stopped him seducing you, too. Here, take this. It's the key to the drawing room next to the go. library at the end of the hall. It was Pierre's room. I rarely went in there. I couldn't. I was too scared of what I might find. Thank you. I promise you won't regret this. So, now we've got the key. And uh, we can get into that office. 
as I was saying, it's fun to find these things out. That That is the actual game, finding out how to proceed in this game. And um, let's get the key and put it on that door. Now we were getting somewhere. That's what I said. Now, um, first of all, I think we'll look at this painting. The painting showed the cachons together in love. As the poet said, the past is a different country. Or did I read that in a fortune cookie? And there's a button there here. There was the very faintest of clicks. Now we should be able to remove the painting. Behind the picture was a safe. And we got a key that looks like it, so... In the safe was some kind of artifact. There were strange symbols on its surface. It looked like the printer's blocks I'd made at art school. If there was one thing I'd learned about symbols, they are always important. But these symbols scratched into stone were impossible to read. I needed to find a way of printing them. At least the stone was round. But what could I use for ink? And what could I print on? Sure, I was stealing, but I knew Imelda didn't know about the artifact, and Carchon was past carrying. So if you're doing this for the first time, um, she actually gives out a lot of clues in the questions she asks herself. Um, she needs to print, but she needs something to print it on and print something with. As you remember, we just picked up a piece of cloth and we picked up paint. So there's that. Um, now, if you're not sure what to do, there's this little question mark over here. And you can actually ask questions or uh, get uh, cylinders. Uh, the stone cylinder looks interesting, but what do I do with it? Um, and he here you can buy um, your uh, help um, from the game. The game will actually give you hints on how to proceed if you're really stuck. But the fun thing is to do As it yourself. As expected, the desk was yet another priceless antique yawn. The blotter and in tray had clearly been placed with mathematical precision. So, first we picked this up because it belonged to her father. My heart skipped a beat. It was a carved elephant. But not just any carved elephant. It had been made by my father. I knew for certain because in my apartment I had its exact twin. Carved into a box he had made. So Carchon had known my father. They really must have been friends. I decided to take the carved elephant. It clearly meant nothing to Imelda. And I probably will not be able to take a lot of the paper. I didn't need a sheet of blotting paper. Not while it was blank. There you go. So, what we do now, you see this ink tray, or uh, yeah, paper tray. We could, theoretically, put these two together. I smeared the paint all over the cloth. When I do messy, I really like to put my heart into it. I hope this was going to help. They don't make lace like that anymore. And then we combine these two I together. I wiped the paint-covered cloth over the surface of the stone cylinder. It took me right back to art class at school. And Maurice, my gorgeous art teacher. Such a shame they had to fire him. Ah, well. Concentrate, Nico, concentrate. And then we do this. Genius. The roller and the pen worked just as I planned. But what did it say? So, this code over here. I'm, I'm giving away all the, the spoilers and uh, uh, basically a walkthrough of the first uh, chapter of the game. But this code over here is what we're going to need later. So, we're going to pick this up. It was some kind of coded message. It read, Subjudice. I may not have learned a lot as a journalist, but that was a term I knew well. It means a legal case that is before the courts. Below it was a sequence of letters that made no sense. So. I suddenly realized there was a connection between the boat ticket and the coded message. The boat ticket was stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. The Conciergerie on the Ile de la Cité, by the river, housed the ancient law courts. So, subjudice could, in this case, mean literally under the law courts, below the conciergerie. 
I was pretty sure I'd found all I could here. And besides, all this opulence was making me pine for my regular life of poverty. This was a huge story. It was also one heck of a puzzle with a lot of pieces missing. But I was going to crack it. And if I could just remember the name of that fancy prize you get for being an ace journalist, I was definitely going to win it this time. Right, now, there's two things I'd like to comment on. Uh, first, if you're put off by her uh, French accent for whatever reason, um, the main game or the main part of the game will be played with John Stobart, which is actually an American and that speaks American English. Now, the second is she just told me where to go. Um, if you're trying to leave an area where you're not finished yet, so for instance, if you forget to pick up that elephant for, for whatever reason, she won't be able to let you or she won't let you go. Uh, away and she will tell you when it's time to move on um, so that's a clear indication that you're still not done yet, uh, somewhere and like I said if I had tried to leave this this house without being finished she would have told me I couldn't leave without saying goodbye to Imelda there you go did you find anything useful this carving do you know anything about it? It was Pierre's. What does the statue have to do with... Please, I need to know. He was given it by a friend. Something to do with Africa. He never explained any more. No. But I think it was important to him. Always on display. Why? It was carved by my father. Oh, I see. I didn't know. Imelda, I will do everything I can to find the killer. Thank you, my dear. And if the police ask... Don't worry. You were never here. Subjudice was the key. I was going to have to find a way under the conciergerie. I decided to head straight for the quayside on the Ile de la Cité. If there was a way of getting under the conciergerie, it would have to be from there. So, there we go. Canchon wasn't the type for messing about on the river. He was up to something down here. Something that got... Oh, sorry, I clicked while she was still talking, and apparently that stops her from uh, talking. Um, now, we can look through that grate, and she will say it's a grate, and it's stuck, but there's actually an entrance over here. I tried pushing the fence, but it wouldn't move. A strange pair of locks stopped the latches from releasing the gate. Now, this is where some of the puzzling comes in, and I'm not really good at puzzles, so uh, you'll have to excuse me for that. Um, and this is just the way it it looks. It's what it is. Um, so what do we do now? We're stuck. Uh, let's do something like that and like that and I move that one over I think uh, yeah and then move this one over are we getting closer not looking like it So, that one goes there, and that one goes there, and that one there, and then we can slide the lock open. One down, one to go. So even if you're not really good at puzzles, they're still fun to do. Uh, but unfortunately, there's a second one of these. Um, so, let's see what we can make of this one. I think we'll do something like that. This one needs to go down there, and that'll will only work if this one goes that way I think uh, is this making sense it's not really making sense right So, 
So we need to get these two up there. Maybe the first one like that. And then do this one like that and that one like that. Uh, okay. Now this is in the way. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's put that one there. Nope, not right either. So, uh, this one there, and that one there, and that one there, and it's open. Nothing like a good convent education for honing your lockpicking skills. And we're in. For a room full of junk, that was one very sophisticated lock system. This place was definitely fishy. In more ways than one. So always check if you can find stuff on the floor. Oops. An old shell case. I wondered what that was doing there. So if you're not sure what to do, you can just move your mouse around and you can see it light up somewhere. And there you go. The words sinister and dexter were carved on either side. Now any good convent girl like me knows the old Roman for left, right, left, right. But what did it mean here? Well, you remember that coat on that piece of cloth? It says S D S S D S S. So S. Nothing happened. D. Nothing happened. S. Nothing happened. S. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. And apparently that doesn't work. So let's try it the other way around. Nothing happened. Why is this not working? Oh, the hole right. was too small even for my little hand. That's stupid. Let's put the key in there first. Mystery solved. Carchon's stone cylinder slotted into the hole with a satisfying click. And now we go. S. A satisfying click told me I turned it to the right position. It felt like tumblers in a safe. D. Another click. Another. S. S. D. S. S. I love the sound of locks clicking open. And we can go through. Now, this is a, a little bit of a tricky one, because this is a doorway that will only open up if you hold it up with this cross over here. So we're going to have to do some ingenuity to actually open it up. Oh my god, the slab came down with a hell of a force. So if I now release this... With nothing to hold it up, the cross dropped back down again. If I was going to get a closer look at the panel, I'd have to find a way of keeping the cross up. Now, what she actually wants us to do is take out this brass casing, and if you don't know this, you'll be stuck here forever, and place that on the doormat. And then we lift this up.
Lifting the cross closed the entrance door and also opened some kind of stone panel. Ingenious. And now we let go and we are able to pick up that squashed shell casing. The stone slab had flattened one end of the shell case. And we do that again. And we get that crushed shell casing out of our inventory and shove it up there. The stone cross was propped up. Now I was getting somewhere. So that's the fun part of this game. You actually need to figure out that you found a shell casing that you can squash with the, with the door, with that mechanic, and then you can use it to prop that up. I touched the slot. Nothing bad happened, which was good. I've always been attached to my fingers. This slot was designed for something specific. But what? Do we have something on us that we can fit in there? Probably not this. Nope. So, I guess we're gonna need the same key as we used on the front door. So let's get this back out. And remove the shell case. And get back out here. See if we can retrieve that key. Yes, we can. I removed the stone cylinder. And get back in there. Shell casing in. Stone cylinder in the hole. Uh, I don't know if you heard that, but there was a little twinkle in the sound effects. That means you're on the right track. The artifact slotted into the hole perfectly. Behind the old walls, I could hear some kind of mechanism groaning into life. But whatever had been triggered had now jammed. Now, this door won't open because this one's closed. So if we pick up that brass casing again... I removed the shell case. The cross didn't drop back down. Some kind of mechanism was holding it up. The gap was too thin for me to get a grip. I needed something thin enough to prise the door open. So what thin things do we have that we can use to pry it open? Let's try that again. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes shell case. it's absolutely Another secret room. not obvious. Somebody but... had something to hide. But was it what I was looking for? So this puzzle with the shell casing and using it to pry open a door, which is not really something you would do in real life, is actually one of the least lesser puzzles that makes the least amount of sense. The others will actually all make pretty good sense. So if you're into wow. logic... Through the darkness, I could see that this was a stateroom. But for what purpose? And how did it tie in with Carchon? This game might be for you. Um, so yeah, I, I'd like to leave you hanging at this point. Um, if you liked it, please leave a like down below. This was the first um, game to play in Mathkey's History Week. Um, more games to come during the rest of the week. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you back next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.